know, Australia has over 1,500 species of native bees. And some bees, in fact, make very interesting pets. Now, in our next story, we'll meet Russell Zabel, who's been keeping honeybees since he was just eight years old. And now he's fallen in love with native bees and reckons they make the perfect pet. Hi, I'm Russell, and my passion is keeping Australian stingless native bees. These little beauties are called Trigona carbonaria, and they occur in southeast Queensland, but do occur from Rockhampton in the north down to southern New South Wales. These would be the species that I would recommend for most of the eastern parts of Australia. They are the most beautiful little creatures. You may not have considered bees as your first pet, but Australian stingless native bees are the perfect pet. Look at this tree, there's a few dead ones there, look. There might be something in there. This is typical country where you might find native bees, and what you need to look for is dead gum trees, very old dead gum trees with some age about them. In Australia, there's up to 1,500 species of native bees, but there is only 10 species which are social. This is a classic tree where you might find native bees. In fact, we've found one nest down here, and up further, we've seen at least two more colonies. These guys are the perfect pollinators of Australian native plants. Because they're so small, they can actually get inside the native flowers and do the pollination job. Whereas the honeybees sometimes destroys the flower in the process of getting nectar. Most times, people will be clearing land or Sometimes they will be cutting firewood and they will bring the hive here rather than the, the hive being destroyed. To commence the transfer process, what we'll do is clean up the nest, remove all the dirt and timber and other bits and pieces, and try to expose purely the nest that the bees live in. A hive like this has probably been in this tree for at least 30 years. And generally they'll never move away uh, unless they're under threat from fire or, or the tree falls over and exposed to the sun and so on. So this, this is an excellent example of a, a viable hive coming from the bush. It's a rather careful process. We don't want to destroy too much of the nest. My aim is to actually save as many beehives as I can from the wild. Most times people will be clearing land or sometimes they will be cutting firewood and they will bring the hive here rather than the, the hive being destroyed. Hello, we've got the whole nest coming out. You know, I've done thousands of these transfers and this moment is the most special. It always amazes me no matter how many times I do this. Look at the beautiful spiral structure of the eggs. And uh, you're very fortunate today that you can actually see a queen, which is a rather unusual occurrence. We don't see the queen of this species terribly often. Uh, you'll notice that around the queen there's the royal entourage, I suppose. They're taking care of the queen and protecting her. Bearing in mind, by the way, this is the most stressful moment in a transfer from a log to a box because the heart of the colony is actually exposed and very vulnerable. By the way, the hive material is called cerumen, which is a mixture of wax that the bees secrete, plus uh, resin from gum trees. The bees have an amazing sense of direction, so it's important to make sure that your new box is positioned as close as possible to the original entrance in the log. If I haven't convinced you that native bees are the best pet, let's have a look at a final reward, the beautiful, citrusy, tasty honey that they produce. The medicinal qualities are better than the European bee honey. Aboriginals have known about the honey for thousands of years and have found it to be an excellent health food. Native bee fact. Stingless bees are tropical species that only occur